Welcome my fellow witches, sorcerers, and other magical practitioners. My name is Aiden and welcome back to my channel. It's been a little bit of a moment, but I'm here finally with my review of Mexican Sorcery, a practical guide to Brujeria de Ranchero uh, by Laura de Villia. So this book I've actually been waiting for for quite some time. I was really looking forward to it and I I'm very happy with it. It's a fantastic book. Um, TLDR, good book, go read. Um, I'll link down in the description uh, the author's Instagram as well as where to buy this book from places other than just Amazon. But you're probably also wondering what is this book about and why do I like it so much? So the first thing is this book is just a treasure trove of Mexican ancestral, spiritual, and cultural knowledge. It goes over all, all kinds of different works. It goes from very light, very, uh, very healing, very uplifting works, all the way over to more malefic, darker, more baneful works. It includes things from all over the spectrum of Mexican spirituality, including things within the church's jurisdiction and those without. I think it's a very, very comprehensive guide to really kickstarting your practice and getting deeper into Mexican spirituality and Mexican sorcery. More specifically, brujeria, as well as witchcraft in general and various other folk traditions found within Mexico. There's just so much to get into, so we'll just go straight into it. So one of the first things I would love to point out to you all is just the use of language inside this book is really, it's really easy to read. It's extremely easy to just open it up and read right through. Um, there's a lot of Spanish and uh, various indigenous languages, but most mainly Nahuatl, uh, used throughout this book. Uh, it, I believe there is a glossary in the back, if you are not sure how to pronounce these terms or what they might mean throughout the book. There's a glossary in the back that goes over what each of these terms mean, and it's very, very useful. The bibliography, of course, is very large, very helpful. But at the core of this book, what I really appreciate about it is the multiculturalness of it, because Mexico is extremely multicultural. It comes from both indigenous groups that were in Mexico, including the Mexica Confederacy, as well as plenty of other indigenous groups that existed all throughout Mexico because it's not all a monolith. The Aztec Empire wasn't the only source of Mexico's indigeneity. There's plenty of other sources of Mexican indigeneity all throughout. And not to mention when the Spaniards came over, there was of course colonization and cross-pollinization of cultures. And then one thing that she specifically talks about that was really interesting to me was the Jewish diaspora to Mexico. That was amazing to read about and some, a topic that I am looking much more into now. There's all kinds of different topics just sprinkled all throughout here. Um, talking about a lot of the social issues in Mexico that heavily, heavily influence the social and cultural aspects of Mexican identity, as well as just general beliefs about being a Mexican and what it means to be a man, what it means to be a woman, what it means to be neither, what it means to be both. The topic of gender does play a heavy role in here, and it's also very good to note that I've actually never seen any witchcraft or cult book do this, but whenever you talk about a person doing a spell on them, um, all throughout this book, instead of saying uh, he or she, or he, she, they, or they, or they, he, any pronouns at all, she specifically uses, in parentheses, person's pronouns. And I don't know, that's like a really simple thing to me, but I think it's, it's amazing. It's awesome. And it's super helpful because in all honesty, we're getting into a time where recognizing people with multiple pronouns, people who don't use the standard ones, it's going to be important. And because we're affecting people on all levels with magic, it's important to recognize all of that. Uh, I'll get off my little soapbox here now. But... I think that just the language use inside of here is very easy to read. It's enjoyable to read. Um, there's been so many cult books where I've tried reading them and I just, 
I really can't get into them. I really can't just sit down and read them because the language barrier, um, not just talking about different languages, just like the use of normal talking like this versus elevating it versus just going over everyone's head with like flowery language and super highbrow English, which is not accessible to everyone. And sometimes I even struggle to read it because it makes no sense when reading it. In terms of any actual critiques that I would have other than just singing its praises, there were a couple points where I felt like, um, I understand why they were done, but I felt like certain phrases were just copy pasted and repeated. Um, and I understand why. I understand why these were done is because they are variations on the same formula. It was just one thing that I noticed. It wasn't anything terrible. It didn't take away from my experience. It was just one thing that when reading it, it got stuck in my mind, if that makes sense. Now, a lot of stuff in here just love. I love the picture quality. Um, I love just like the amount of different works that are shown in here, how to do all these things. The reasoning is really important to me. Um, I love in the Saint chapter when we talk about the relationships that uh, Mexicans have with uh, Catholic spirits, with Catholic saints. And it's something that I will probably talk about at length at some point, but the experience of growing up heavily Catholic and surrounded by a Mexican Catholic family mixed in with cultural Catholicism and societal Christianity all throughout uh, the United States of America. It's a very, it's a very interesting experience. And then also adding on top of it, all the intersectionalities that I have within myself that are often at conflict and at odds with uh, predominant Christianity in society. It was just very interesting to read about and very comforting just because it is something that I have a lot of access to and have a lot of knowledge of, but still feel feel a lot of constraints whenever I approach it and feel strange about it. It's, it's comforting to read. It's enjoyable to read. And talking about how the saints are more like our friends and since they're closer to us, since they're less far away and less especially the folk saints, are less tightly bound to the Catholic Church and all that it represents. Overall, though, I highly, highly, highly recommend this book to any reconnecting Mexicans, any Mexican immigrants, anyone, really, um, who has an interest in Mexican spirituality and spiritual practice. Um, I say spiritual because it does go beyond just... Uh, Bujeria goes beyond just uh, different types of uh, Christian magic. It includes so much inside of here. Um, I was honestly a little bit on the fence about this book. I was a little bit worried about it because there's a lot of not so great Mexican books out there. But truly, this book, I would say this book is the answer to all my worries. I would say that it has everything that I would want inside a book about Mexican magic. Um, it was awesome reading through and noticing a bunch of little things that I grew up with or I heard about growing up. And it's like, oh, I know what that is. Oh, I recognize that. That's why we do this. Oh, okay. Things like that. It was a breath of fresh air in the massive list of occult books that I've read. Um, especially because it feels a lot more personalized when I'm reading it. It feels less like I'm being lectured at by a very rich British man. <laughs> if you couldn't tell, I brought a lot of Tolemic works. Um, and more like I was talking with someone who was educating me about their experience. And it really feels comforting to read this book. I don't feel like I'm being talked down to. I think that's the big thing about this book. It's inviting you to a conversation and it's holding place for you at that table. It's giving you the ability to speak and think and listen at the same time. And there's just so much inside of here that I could go on for hours. If you do want to hear me go on for hours, let me know. I could do a deep dive into every single chapter if you're all interested in that. Um, I would be happy to do that. It'll just take a bit more time. Um, and we all know that I'm very bad about time. Hopefully, 
Hopefully I will be having more time to create more videos. I'm very excited about making more videos. I have several planned out. I know I keep saying that, but like I actually do this time. It's just managing my time and being in college and working is not doing it for me. Well, with that, thank you all for watching. Uh, be sure to check out Mexican Sorcery by Laura Davilia. Be sure to check it out in the description down below. Also her Instagram, I'll link it in the description as well. Um, I also, side note, love her Instagram. Uh, I go on there pretty frequently. Uh, lots of great content, fantastic, uh, amazing stories. But with that out of the way, folks, my name has been Aiden. Thank you all for watching, and I will hopefully see you in the next one. Goodbye.